Hi guys, we are here, uh, the Totally Awesome Show. I am Aaron, and this is my lovely co-host Candace. Hello. And we have a very special guest today, the always awesome Paul Eiding. Um, Hello. Gonna, gonna have a little chat, so um, we can kind of jump into it. Um, first off, how you? We already kind of exchanged pleasantries, but you know how? How are you doing these days? How are you keeping yourself busy? Um. Uh, well, right now, you know, the, the um, honest truth is uh, we're um, we do. <laughs> we're redoing our back shower so oh, yeah. we demolitioned the shower mm -hmm. um uh, over the weekend um well I actually started on thursday <laughs> so busy work the it's deal is yeah it's it's off my office here yep and my uh son-in-law shares this office space with me okay and he and my daughter who got married last year Oh, cool. are on, finally on their honeymoon so oh, they're yeah. taking two weeks um they went to ireland now they're in london then they're going to paris oh, and man. while they're away um we are dem we're doing all the work <laughs> of course it never <laughs> ends, right? come back and enjoy it <laughs> right yeah he really he's really lucked out i mean this guy he, he's a guy who could have handled all of it by himself but yeah uh, we, we're being very kind to him right <laughs> Right. It's always nice to have somebody do the work for you, even if you can do it. You know, I'm, I'm usually the one who does all the work around our house. So it's a it's all it's a never ending project until you die, basically home ownership. So it's oh, fun, yeah. fun stuff. Man. Yeah, fun stuff. But I'm, I'm extra lucky, though, because uh, we have my sister in law living with us as well. My wife's sister, uh, her husband died two years ago, right? At, I guess it was right near the beginning of the pandemic. Or, no, I guess it was in the middle of the pandemic. Okay. And she wanted to get out of Arizona. Mm -hmm. So um, we said, come visit. So she came to visit and she stayed. She and liked it had, so much. Hey. We've had a uh, um, little compound here has my daughter, my son-in-law, my other daughter, my sister-in-law, my wife and myself and four dogs. <laughs> and my sister-in-law actually did about 90% of the demolition. She's one of oh, those wow. she's one of those people that is good at everything. She just um she's a powerful <clears throat> human being. Yeah. And uh people say are you really bummed that your sister-in-law is living with you? It's like no. Absolutely not. She's <laughs> she's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. She helped, awesome. she helped build the tiny house we put in the back behind the pool. Cool. She she's just much handier than I am. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome though. That's awesome. Yep, yeah. That's, that's very cool. My mom's actually the same way. She's very, I actually, I, we were just up, uh, in our hometown and, uh, stayed with her. She's kind of stayed with her mom and I stay with my parents and, uh, I help them install a, a mug rack and my mom, you know, typically, you, you know, I'd be volunteering, doing all the work, all the measurements. She had all the boards cut, everything ready. I just had, basically I had to operate the drill, you know, and, and pretend to help her, but she, she had it, but I thought, hey, I'm here. It's fun. We haven't done a project in a while, so. Yeah, we we had to do repiping. We uh, piped uh, um, all copper into the back bathroom because it's a long distance. Yeah. And we put in a, one of those, um, uh, a new uh, water heater. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. So instant on and a yeah. recirculation mm. thing, all that. Yep. And the guys came in and they kept looking at me to <laughs> <Yeah>. wanting to... <laughs> And I said, no, you're looking at the wrong person. Right. The person yeah. who really she, knows this right. stuff. I'm an actor. Right. I can right. act like I know what I'm right. talking about. Right. Right. He knows. Yeah. So I exactly. said, deal with her. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I, can, I, I can play a general contractor on TV, but she's the actual general contractor. So <laughs> exactly. Talk to her. Talk to her. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. That's we, we know all about that. We've, we've been in our house uh, close to two years now, mm -hmm. I think. And it's. Yeah most it's it's very 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 nice you know move-in ready house but i always like to mess with projects and mm -hmm. make my little man cave so it never yeah. ends you know it, <laughs> it's quiet. always something you you get it you get it where you want it and then you decide mm -hmm. eh, i want to i want to do something else I so. do something yeah. there, there's always a project yeah. but <laughs> yeah it is what it is so um i but i am also working i am yeah oh yeah oh yeah for sure for sure you gotta you're, yeah. you're pulling your weight you're pulling your weight in different ways yeah you gotta you gotta pay for everything right exactly exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yep. it's a team effort exactly for sure indeed for sure. yep so uh 
we kind of like to start from the beginning. How did you get the acting bug? I know I've I've read that you kind of started in the army, from what I understand, right? Is that kind of when you first decided you wanted to get in showbiz yeah. a little bit? Well, I did I did theater, um, a couple of shows in high school, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. and um, and then I uh, in college I did a couple of shows, and I always loved it, um, and then. Uh, I was a music major and the school where I was going had a terrible music program. So I dropped out and said, okay, now it's time for me to join the army because everyone in my family, um, all the men served. Mm -hmm. And it was just one of those things that you did. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a real blue collar uh, folks. Yep. And so uh, it was my time to go in. So I, I joined. And um, somehow got lucky enough to be sent to Germany. And when I was in Germany, uh, they had a, uh, I was in the 3rd Infantry Division, which is the Audie Murphy Division. The most decorated soldier in, of World War II mm -hmm. was from 3rd Infantry. Mm -hmm. And when I got in, they had a, um, what do you call it, uh, you know, orientation sort of thing. And they were asking, they asked if anybody played an instrument or sang. And I did both. I played a string bass, uh, an electric bass, and I also sang. Mm -hmm. um, so they they pulled me out of the, the group. And I went into a room. And I met a gentleman who was sitting at a piano. And he said, uh, don't tell me your name. I'm guessing names. <laughs> <laughs> My real name is not Paul. My real name is Otis, mm -hmm. Otis Eiding, Otis Errol Eiding. That's pretty Errol. funny. That oh yeah, Otis was her grandpa, and Errol is her dad's real name too. Yeah, so that's yeah. get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yep. for real. Yeah, but everybody called yeah everybody called him Rick. So yeah, everybody called him Rick, but his real name was Errol. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I was named after Errol Flynn. Yep. Okay. My dad too. So, yep. yep. Same. <laughs> yeah. There so, you go. Uh, so. I went into the room. I never, I was never crazy about Otis. I don't know why, <laughs> but I went into the room and he said, I'm, I'm guessing names. You look like a Paul. And I said, cool. <laughs> so from that moment on, I never changed it legally, mm -hmm. but anybody right. who calls me Otis now is either trying to sell me something. Right. Right. Now, you know, or knows me from uh, before the military. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so I got into the group as a singer and a bass player. Within about six months, I ended up uh, being the director of the group, uh, the Army Chorus. And um, I, there was a, a gentleman in the group. Most of these guys were drafted. Mm -hmm. uh, you had to audition to get into the group. Mm -hmm. Most of them had been drafted. Several had been actors and mu uh, musicians in New York, or Los Angeles, or Chicago, or whatever. And there was a gentleman by the name of um, John Hancock, um, very large African American dude. He was about six three, with this incredible basso voice. Oh, yeah. And John was in the original cast of um, Roots oh, okay. way back when yeah. he was born. Yep. Well, we would perform, and after you perform, uh, you're still up. The adrenaline right. is still pumping, right. so you're not sleepy. You're not tired. Yeah. We went back to the barracks, and we would sit, and we would uh, either improv or we'd read plays. And we read a play called Zoo Story. It's a two-character play. Mm -hmm. And when I was finished, when we finished the, the thing, John looked at me and said, you're an actor. This is what you should be doing. <laughs> um, and I was a good musician. But when I got out of the military, I started playing with guys who were just way too good for me. Right, right. And I just didn't, I was playing jazz, and I just never had the ears mm -hmm. for it. You know, you got to have big ears to hear all the chord changes. Right, right. I could read charts, you know, but I, so I said, I'd really have to woodshed to get better. Right. And I started doing theater, mm -hmm. and it was also a great way to, <laughs> to meet women. <laughs> uh, I bet. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Yep. Got to be honest. Yep, yep. Uh, and I started uh, doing shows. I did more musicals than straight plays. Mm -hmm. 
And it, it hit me. Uh, I said, this is this is what I want to do. So I did musical theater, but all you know, basically community theater stuff mm -hmm. in Cleveland. <laughs> Excuse me. And I met a woman, um, <laughs> an actress and a choreographer. We moved to Minnesota together because there was great theater there. Mm -hmm. And um, I started doing improv. And then that's when I said, this is it. Uh, mm -hmm. th this is my life now. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up doing uh, improv for a couple of years, like Second City mm -hmm. right. um, yep. sort of stuff. And got very lucky, started doing a lot of commercials and voiceover stuff. And I was I was bit, and then there was nothing else that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I, I didn't even know if there was anything else I could do. Right. It was like... That's okay. awesome. You know, it's like... You know. Right. Yeah. Which yeah. it's it's rare. That's rare for a lot of people. You know, it's mm -hmm. good if you know that you're kind of, you know, not necessarily destined, but it's just that's that's kind of what you're here to do. You got to got to jump on it. So, yeah, yeah I just cool. felt like I I knew that I couldn't do a regular nine to five. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It, yeah. It just wasn't in me. My brother mm -hmm. could do it. My sister. But I just couldn't handle it. I did it for a short time. Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, to make money when I got out of the military. I was a bill collector. Ooh. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Everyone's was, favorite guy. Yeah, that's a, that's everybody's <laughs> favorite guy. They paid the all, bills though. <laughs> all over the phone, mm -hmm. nothing in person. Yeah, and I, I made it an acting gig because I would I would. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> We can edit out anything that you decide. Say, you know, you don't, don't you worry. Don't we can, talk. <laughs> you know, if we, we spill the beans too much, we can always cut it out. But okay, good. Because what happened was <laughs> the first time I called. Excuse me, I got a little throat thing happening. The first time I called anybody, these were bills that had already been um, mm -hmm. uh, delinquent for a yeah. year yeah. or two. We had to skip trace and find people, right. mm -hmm. which I was very good at. <laughs> Like detective work. Yeah, right, he will find right. you. Yes. And then the first call was always just straight ahead, not a nice guy at all. Yeah. You know, this is this is Mike Elliott. Are you going to pay the bill or not? Yeah. I don't want any sob stories. You know, you know this. Exactly. Got a pencil, take my. And I would never say goodbye. I always just hung up. Yep. <laughs> and if they paid, cool. If they didn't pay, then I would call back as another guy. Mm -hmm. And this time it was Paul Allen. Oh. And Paul Allen was just nice and reasonable. Mm -hmm. And I heard all kinds of stories about that, that other, other guy, guy. Yeah. <laughs> how horrible he was and how he swore right, and, right. and did all this stuff. And I knew they were lying because <laughs> right. you right. didn't do that. Right, right. And then if he still didn't pay or make arrangements to pay, I called back third time as Boyd Sutton. Hey. Oh, that's Boyd, a name. Yeah. I love Boyd, it. Well, Boyd Sutton was from... Uh, was from Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. and he was in the legal department. <laughs> and you know, I took, I picked Boyd Sutton because his initials are BS. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very nice. That's hey. awesome. And that's what I, I was, I would be talking to somebody and somebody would be yelling at me and I'd be doing a little soft shoe by my, because we had the headsets on. Yep. And the other guys in the office were really very dead serious about what they mm -hmm. were doing. Yeah. I couldn't be. I had to make it. Um, there was a I process. It, yeah. I had to make it a, a, an acting gig. Yeah. Right. And then after about about nine or ten months, I said they were going after people who had mm -hmm. delinquent hospital bills. Oh, yeah. yeah. And these were people that it's really like, couldn't pay. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I, I I told my wife, I said, I can't do this. Mm hmm. Um, well, then my girlfriend, I said, I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. And she's cool. So and that's when I was working at the Brave New Workshop, making $100 a week. Mm -hmm. So I was going from good money to $100 yeah. a week. Yeah, I can, I can afford a sandwich maybe this mm -hmm. week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, boy, that was a lot. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, no, no that's with, okay. with We love what it. We're talking about. No, it totally no, does. It totally is. does. We love it. We it's love the it. Beginning. It's everything, the everything is kind of a little step on that path. You know, yeah. you got to yeah. you got to find is. ways to kind of hone your craft when you first start. And out, I work so. on the phone, so I understand the phone personality yeah. entirely because Aaron will walk in the room and be like, who is that person? And I'm just like, it 
it's my phone yeah. personality. I'm sorry. Yeah. You, you kind of have to because I will. I'll, I'll. You know, I'm. I'm used to her normal voice. You know, and there's. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're married, we've been married for 16 years, and there's fluctuations, but it's always her. <laughs> but when she's at work, I come in. You know, if I get home early from work, and I'll walk in her office, and I'm like. This is a completely different person, man. She is putting on a show with these people. Like it's it's impressive. It's impressive. Who am I married to? Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like oh, I've got it. I got an extra girlfriend, I guess, because I have no <laughs> idea who this is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you just man. put a headset on me, and I guess she'll come right, out. I don't exactly, know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. She's she's in there somewhere. Oh, oh that's funny. Yeah. So, you know, no, that's all. That's all part of the part of the process to kind of get you yeah. there um yeah you know we we met at the chicago um tf con the transformer con um you know had some great chats and we've talked to uh peter and frank and you know all those guys like i said the heavyweights um, yes yeah. they're you know they're you're you're all of you guys are yeah. are phenomenal talent and we we love the voiceover community we've gotten to know a few you know actors and just you guys are all a great bunch of people and some of the most talented human beings, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, trying to sell you anything. I'm not going to call you Otis, you know, I'm not going to sell you anything, but you know, <laughs> legitimately we, you know, we feel that it, the, the voice acting community, you know, that does that for the most part is some of the most talented people we've ever met. And, you know, things like the transformers that kind of become this huge, thing you know when you, yeah. everyone we talk to when they first start out it's just another gig you know you you never know you know no. people try to ask do you, did you have any idea that it was going to explode you know like you, you no one knows if anything's going to take off or not well actually I've, I've said oh god yeah of course i knew immediately yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. yeah 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 i was there from the beginning i was i was rooting for us but right. yeah no yeah no it, it and um you know all, all of those uh voice sessions had to be a blast with all those guys we've talked to everybody and you know how, how much fun you guys must have had and you know all, all being live and being able to be there together how how fun was that experience for you yeah it, yeah it was it was and for me it, i was in awe most of the time because i was one of the new kids um i had not been around town that long um especially in the voiceover um maybe gosh maybe a year and a half mm -hmm. which is still new because when i came to town i was doing theater yeah mm -hmm. um and my agent wouldn't even sutton barth and venari uh said they would sign me on camera but they wouldn't sign me voiceover because they had everybody they needed right so for i guess maybe seven months eight months mm -hmm. after i signed with them i was just doing on camera stuff mm -hmm. until they heard me uh, they they saw something I did yeah. and said, "Oh, wow! But we could we could use him in this particular way." Right. Um. So when I'm when you're there with Scatman Carruthers and and these guy these comedians mm -hmm. that I had watched uh, uh, on the Tonight Show and listened to over the years, and I and I'm with these guys. Who 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 the heck do I think I am? Right, you know, right. Really, I mean, it, it was, and um, Roger C. Carmel, who was <clears throat> in the movie, and I think he did some of this stuff. I'm not sure how much he was in. Roger C. Carmel played a character on um, Star Trek. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mud. And, yep. Harry Mud. I Mud. My dad was a huge Star Trek fan. And I, I told him that, you know, you don't put two and two together when you're a kid, you know, and this is pre way, you know, when I was growing up in the eighties, pre-internet, right. but I always kind of, I was good with voices cause I love doing goofy voices and, you know, I'm a cut up too. So, you know, I kind of thought that, but knowing that I told my dad that years later, I said, you know, a couple of the characters in transformers after the, in the movie and after, it's Harry Mudd, man. He's like, that's amazing, you know. And then you, and then you hear it, and you're like, oh yeah, it totally is. Yeah. He's just doing a yeah. little, slightly different accent or whatever. But right. Yeah. And yep. and Chuck McCann, who was incredibly fun. I mean, all those guys. Yep. Uh, now Greg Berger never really impressed me. I, I never really liked him that much. <laughs> <laughs> I Same. Do this all the, Same. I do this all the time with, with Greg. Uh, I think because I, I love the guy so much. Right, right. Uh, and we we saw it. I think I may have told you before. 
we started doing theater together. Okay. Uh, yeah. The first show I did when I moved to Los Angeles in 83, mm -hmm. Cloud Nine, mm -hmm. uh, he yeah. understudied me mm -hmm. and another character. And uh, you should see him in drag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He was not the most attractive uh, young woman. You know, I'm I'm friends with him on Facebook too. I'm going to ask him to send me a old. I see if he has any any <laughs> photo evidence. Yeah, we gotta we gotta see that. So <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I posted a couple of times a picture of of me in drag because I played the little girl. Right. With him behind me being a kind of a jerk <laughs> with a cigarette. Right. And a couple of the other bad guys. Right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but the, you know the cast was was amazing, mm -hmm. and yeah, we we wasted a lot of a lot of tape yep. back in the day, right, oh, right, with laughing, you know. It's oh like, yeah, no, yep. you gotta enjoy it though. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. That's what that's what you know. We talked to Dan, uh, like I'd said before, we were at a con in Cleveland two weeks ago, and Dan, um, you know, the I I actually asked in his panel, you know, what we we talked quite a bit about stuff, but I actually asked that question how much work actually got done on any given day you know because i can i can only imagine because that's i think besides the fact that guys who are good at voice you know the acting voicing characters who are also comedians they kind of have this cynical yeah. worldview that actually helps to create characters because they understand mm -hmm. you know to be really funny a lot of guys are poking fun at the world in general and i think that really translates yeah. to helping understand a character and and, un, and being empathetic because you kind of see everything mm -hmm. more than most people do i think and and i think you that's, got a bit of an edge there, there right that helps for sure you know? for sure for sure yeah 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 so that's yeah that you know kind of that that's the going thing and, and one of the things you said about you know thinking who am i in this you know group everybody we talk to they say the exact same thing so oh. you're in you're in good company. I think they all felt felt that way getting started. They mm -hmm. thought, you know, my goodness, these guys are just, you know, they're eight different characters and I couldn't, you know, if I wasn't watching them, I wouldn't even know that they were it was the same guy because they're so good, but I mean, they're all I, I, I got to tell you, I love it when somebody comes up to me and says, "Oh, I didn't realize that was you." Right? Yeah. That makes me yeah. feel so good. It's so good. Yeah, cuz there <laughs> there are yeah, even I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of actor, you know, we say there's a lot of, you know, A-list celebs that are just paid to be them, basically in there. Yeah. You know, some people have a great voice and that's cool that they're used for their really, you know, distinct voice. But I think that's the highest compliment is, oh, I didn't even know you were in that because your vo you were so good at that character. Or, I had no idea it was you. Or that, if I knew, I forgot it was you right. as I was going through the story. Right. So, yeah. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so much fun. Uh, the ones that kind of irritate me is when someone said, um, "Oh God, it was a character I did in." Oh, it was Perceptor, mm -hmm. and then he heard me in um, Incredibles Two. Oh yeah, yep, yep. And he said, "I knew that was you." <laughs> <laughs> like he sounded like what? Right. How, how was Perceptor anywhere near? Right. You know, um, the the little guy from uh, Incredibles too. It's like yeah, uh, I yeah, I can't remember his name either, but I know exactly. Yeah, he was one yeah. of the villains, right? Yeah, he was one of the the the. Uh... Yeah. No, actually, he, no. He, he became a villain because yeah. they, yeah. they put right. the glasses on him. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I don't tell people that to their face. You know, any actor friends we have, but you know, <laughs> I'm pretty good at that. But some sometimes it's you either honestly don't know or it's so such a good performance mm -hmm. you kind of know but you like can of said yeah. you just forget because you're mm -hmm. so engrossed in that character um and and, and and to be honest there you you get cast by different different companies and different yeah. casting directors because they want a similar sound mm -hmm. right like right. yeah. grandpa max is very similar right. to um um a colonel campbell right mm -hmm. in metal gear and yeah so there are those. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. For that's sure. Okay. If you got a range, then that's right. perfect. Then <laughs> we've we've talked to Nolan quite a bit about that, and uh, you know he said, I you know he he his least favorite roles probably are the ones where it's him or Nathan Drake. You know it's because he's got you know so much range too. You know you want to step outside. You get kind of typecast because you've got a great voice, but you right. want to 
you know, you want to really push the the boundaries. And I think that's the cool mm -hmm. thing about voice acting is you literally can be anything. You anything. know, we, yeah, we've had, we've, you know, Frank has said, you know, you could, some of these guys, you know, you could play a, a toaster oven and be riveting, you know, and that's, <laughs> that's, you know, I think probably, I would imagine probably the most fun is just being, you know, something yeah. way out there and really pushing yourself. Yeah. Yep. The last season I liked the last season I did uh, Ben 10 was more fun than any of the other seasons because I got to do regularly five different characters. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, now that's that's the fun of it. Right. You know? exactly. Aside from getting paid. Well, yeah, obviously that's, you know, that's that's up there too, always great. Yeah, if you can. Hey, if you can pay your bills and have a blast, that's that's the best life. Possible. And enjoy your work, too. Right. Amen. Yeah. yeah. You know, this has really no, you know, bearing or importance in the universe. But I've always wondered, did you, you know, a lot of these characters, especially early in the day, how much of like, let's say, Perceptor was given to you? And how much did you like the, the, the English accent, let's say, did, was that you or was that they thought, you know, we want him to sound smart and British and, you know, how much of that was you? As as I recall, it, all they said was they wanted a an absent-minded professor type. Okay. And I came up with the English. I, I don't remember that being on the uh, on the sheet. Right. Actually, somebody, I wish I'd, I should have taken a picture of it. A guy uh, came in, uh, in Burbank. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. brought me uh, what he said was the, the actual first audition sheet for Perceptor. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Wait, um, I'm going to see if I, did I take a picture of it? I'm not sure if I took a picture. I should have taken a picture of it, but I don't know if I did. If you find it and we and you send it to me, we can have our editor work her magic and have it pop up on the video when she finishes. <laughs> oh, that'd editing. be yeah. very cool. We'll, we'll do the editing magic. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah I don't. That. I don't think it was. But I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna look. There was something else I took a picture of. I know that. I love it when fans bring stuff like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it was the. He said it was the actual one sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, with the lines for Perceptor uh, to audition. And it, it said nothing about English accent or whatever. Right. I think I, I, I think that was all for me. Just right. They said absent-minded professor right. sort of character. And I said, okay, yep. this, that's what I thought of. You know? Right, right. Someone said, oh, were you doing um, um, C-3PO? It's like, no. <laughs> right, yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah, see that that never really occurred to me. So I, you know, I wouldn't mm -hmm. have thought that. You know, we're big Star Wars. Yeah. Obviously, Candace is a Star Wars fan. She's I'm a huge Star Wars books, fan. <laughs> but you know, she she never would have thought that. But mm -mm. no. Nope. Yeah, that's cool. That's very cool. You know, and and to me, that's the cool thing about the level of talent back then. You know, there's a lot of talented voice actors now, obviously, but you know, that was a very still kind of a fledgling thing i would say um you know having a big voice cast and voicing these mm -hmm. cartoons True. that are kind of commercials for toys and you get a little bit of information you kind of have to make the magic happen and to me that's the cool part is you know a lot of people realize you know growing up now that we're all older and cynical you know in, in my generation you know you know it was aimed at selling us toys but what you guys did with mm -hmm. the stories and the voices made it something special and i think that's mm -hmm. that's you know something if it was just a you know trying to push something on kids it wouldn't have lasted as long as it has mm -hmm. i think that's right. kind of the magic you know yeah. yeah and you know what to be honest i never thought of it we, we as we as we get older and get further away from it right we all realized it was all about selling toys right i wasn't thinking about them selling toys then it was a mm -hmm. cartoon right oh, yeah. it was a right. it was a fun thing to watch yeah um, great story yeah yeah yeah, I love the fact that you, human beings can can learn something from machines. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, it's a little yeah. scarier today with what with AI. Yeah. 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 AI. I, yeah. The AI. You know, we're we're getting a little closer to Terminator than we are Transformers, but you yeah, know, it, you know, it is what it is. But I th that was a cool thing we went to uh, at that same TFCon where we met um, the night before Friday. Uh, Ron Friedman did a, mm -hmm. a big panel about you know yeah. the script and just his writing process in general and that was the cool thing that that hit me and you know i obviously realized it as a kid that even though these are transforming robots 
they're very human. You know, they have very yep. human relate. You, you can't, he, you know, his big thing was, he said, no one's going to care about this story if it's not relatable and the characters aren't relatable. Mm -hmm. And I think that between the writing and what you get guys did voice wise, these characters felt like either neighbors or a family, you know, Optimus Prime is everyone's robot dad, you know, and that, yeah. that takes mm -hmm. special talent to make that happen, you know, to, to give that feel that, you know, this is somebody you can count on. And like you said, with a, a character like Perceptor, you're not given a ton, mm -hmm. but you have this, you know, he's, he's my cool nerdy science friend. That's cool. You know, he, he does all this, the science fair projects for me when I'm too lazy or something like that. You know, that <laughs> you, you know, someone that reminds you of all of these giant transforming robots mm -hmm. and, you know, and, it, and cool. it's all about them caring about one another. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And right and wrong. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. And that that's that's honestly a good point, because that's one thing I kind of miss is just kind of a it's fun to have a story once in a while where you're, you know, you're going from each side's perspective. But sometimes it's fun to just have a straight, you know, good and evil, you know, and, and yeah. clearly watching, defined. Right. And watching, right. you know, it, it, a lot of, you know, a lot of kids said that, you know, if they were missing parents or, you know, that maybe grew up without a dad or a mom or whatever, you know, and a lot of these cartoons were kind of their moral compass, you know, yeah. sometimes because mm -hmm. it's it showed how good guys treat each other, like you said, and mm -hmm. how bad guys treat each other. They're just kind of in it for themselves and, you know, they're OK with stepping over each other. And, you know, just something like that in a story can be really cool, you know, in your mm -hmm. formative years to see just that, you know, yeah. this is how it's done kind of thing. He shaped the generation. Up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. When you it it is we've come a long way in storytelling. Right. To to see both sides right. and to find the gray area and mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the the anti hero and all that stuff. Right. But there is still good and bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. Um yeah. I'll, I'll that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah, we could go, we could go we on go and on, on and try to solve the world's problems, but that, yeah, no, that, yeah. that you know, that that's the thing. Because even even if a story isn't that simple, it at least kind of helps, you know, especially kids. Mm -hmm. It's helpful helpful to have at least. I know when I see somebody acting a certain way, eh, they're not acting great. They're not they're right. not being a great person right now. You know that that it, you know character traits you can kind of mm -hmm. have clearly defined, which is which is kind of a good thing too, yeah. but um indeed yeah so and you know we were talking talking with a lot of the guys the transformers movie you had a huge part you know you were one of the few kind of very g1 characters that had a pretty big role in that <laughs> movie how was that you know did you feel it kind of you know after you know optimus died and all that were you kind of like oh boy i'm still in this thing or, or just, <laughs> you know how, how was that whole process i'm still alive <laughs> yeah. yeah i've made it yeah. Yeah. yeah, the nerdy guy um, wins. <laughs> what was great was that I got more to do in the movie than I did in several of the episodes mm -hmm. th through the season. So that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and and the fact that that I lasted uh, um, was was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I I don't know. I do get. I do feel kind of guilty every once in a while when somebody comes up and you made me cry mm -hmm. when I was when I was nine years old when you said, you know, I, I didn't kill him. I just said right. It. Yeah. It, it ain't gonna work. Uh, right. Right. Um. Yeah. It's just. Yep. I would like to have. As an actor, you never get as much as you want. Right, right. You always want yeah. more. You know? For sure, exactly. for sure. It'd be cool to have yeah. a Perceptor spinoff movie or something back in the day. But Hey, I wouldn't yeah. fight it. Right? Hey, <laughs> exactly. I, we'd, we'd all be here for it, too. We would all be yeah. for most of the Autobots, I would think, could probably mm -hmm. have their own little spinoff. No, the, okay. the killer is now, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get cast. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's true okay. yeah you just yeah, never know nowadays exactly. you, so. never know, you never know who would go no, it depends to on how many it how many depends on how many uh followers i have me twitter followers how many You're right hey well, well we'll do our best <laughs> to help we'll, you we'll out we'll, those yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll share and share and uh, retweet I've, as much i've as never can. fought i've never worked hard enough for all that stuff <laughs> yeah, right right oh it's a it's a very changing world it's that's, it is. That's, it is indeed. that's that's it's fickle. Uh, a lot of your PR and a lot of your, you know, auditioning kind of happens on social media nowadays for a lot of, which is crazy. You know, it's yeah, yeah. totally, totally different world. And that kind of leads to my next thing. I was going to switch gears to uh, talk about Colonel Campbell. Um, 
what was that like getting into early video games because all the oh, yeah exactly yep the fox sound yep yeah. um you know a lot of the we have a lot of friends you know in the 20s 30s 40s range and you know the the youngins uh they just assume you know voice acting has always been in video games but you know around early 90s to late 90s it was still pretty pretty much a fledged mm -hmm. to have full on you know there was always voices but full on you know scripts and acting what was that process like in video games starting off with like the PlayStation era, like having oh. a full role? And even, even, you know, before that doing things for, uh, um, home computers, mm -hmm. I did a lot of stuff at a place called knowledge adventure, mm -hmm. um, down in Irvine. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those were, um, training children, kids games right the educational side mm -hmm. kind that of more. math blaster yeah yep. you know, spelling blaster no, those sort of things yeah and a lot of english is a uh, second language mm -hmm. where yeah. i have to say let us let us awesome. let us <laughs> you know every word you know 20 right. 30 times mm -hmm. yeah and then when uh blizzard uh contacted me about doing some i did some other games i don't remember them but early on it was it was terrible because you'd have a few actors and the rest would guys who were you know working on the game right worked in the office yeah and you just throw voices in yeah and they weren't very good yeah mm -mm. um god bless them they were doing they were good at what they did right but not not as actors <laughs> yeah you can tell um, the difference. Yeah, for sure. Big time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then when it happened with Metal Gear and I think Metal Gear and Diablo were pretty close to the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and you find out you're working with other voice actors. Um, and it, it, the world changed. Mm -hmm. Metal Gear especially because when, when we did Metal Gear, again, we did it together right they would uh, you weren't just in the room by yourself right i was with snake that's uh, what i always I, wondered if you guys were actually in the booth together kind of able to go back and forth a little bit well the the first metal gear game wasn't in a booth okay uh, <laughs> uh it was in a a, a house in uh, in hollywood that had been rented and they had Tried to convert one of the one of the rooms into a booth. Okay. Uh, and as I recall, the director could, and some of them, the director was in the room with you, and the engineer was on in another room. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't um, soundproof. Yeah. Oh no. So on Wednesdays and Thursdays, there would be trash pickup. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> exactly. And anytime yep. there was a large uh, truck that went mm -hmm. by or a motorcycle, yep. we'd have to stop and wait. Yep. So yeah. So it took, I recorded, I think for nine or 10, maybe 11 days, Snake for probably 20 days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of it was because we <laughs> had to hold for noise. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, yeah. And that one was cast by a woman by the name of Chris uh, Zimmerman Salter. Mm -hmm. Chris has, she's done every Metal Gear game, directed every one. She's directed everything from, she started at Hanna-Barbera. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. She was there when I when I was started doing Hanna-Barbera, the GoBots, right. and mm -hmm. Sky Commanders, and Johnny yeah. Quest, and all those things. Yeah. She was an assistant for Gordon Hunt. Mm-hmm. And Gordon Hunt is responsible for three or four of the best um, voiceover directors, Andrea Romano and Chris and several others. Um, and she's the one who, uh, it wasn't her choice to record there. <laughs> right. She had no choice. Yeah, it was kind of guerrilla style back in the day, I would imagine a little bit yeah, getting started. Was. Yeah, uh, But then uh, what, three years later when we did Two, she uh, got them to go into a real studio. Yep. Good. Good. To save time and save money. Right. 
She was um, like, this is taking way too much time. Yeah. It was crazy. It was just crazy. It was very unprofessional. And <laughs> how anything sounded as good as it did. Right. Yeah. Beyond me. Well, th that's probably a good thing. It was just 32 bit audio, you know, CD ROM. So absolutely, there was a lot of room for error that could be, you know, already compressed to help mm -hmm. you out. But yeah. Well, they've been they've yeah. been talking for the last year about a, a remaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I don't know. If, I don't know if it's really going to happen or not. We would love it. Yeah. We would, would love I would it. Love to see that, that would be amazing. I, I still have, you know, obviously I had you sign the, you know, my one PS copy at right. the TFCon. But yeah, I, you know, all those. I love them and it'd be cool to see a faithful adaptation, you know, with a mm -hmm. little bit newer control and all that. But because there's a lot of people see. who started playing the games later in the right in the True. lineup. So yeah. them going back, it's hard for them to actually play those because they might not have the systems or the setups for it. So right. a remaster would be amazing. I keep hearing it's going to happen. Yeah. Well, it's uh, I did a, um, uh, a photo shoot with uh, with uh, Snake. <laughs> with uh, David and Kim I and uh, um, Liquid. Yep. Our buddy Liquid. Cam. Yeah, we love yeah. Cam. He's yeah. got a book. He's got a book coming out. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. And he wanted to take some pictures of all of us. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and there's still talk about it happening. I don't know. Yeah, Nobody yeah. knows for sure, but That's there's it. scuttlebutt. No, oh, yeah. I hope so. That's good. That's good. We'll make for some sure. noise about it then. Yeah, <laughs> we'll sure. we'll push that on Twitter. Yeah. Because I've heard um, several people have come to me and they, they only one they played is four. Yeah. And, and they want to go back. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you said, you know, do we have the system? Yeah. Right. Do, we have the system? Exactly. do we have the setup? And then it's hard because people aren't used to the old controls and the old way that, that the, the systems yep. do. So if you don't grow right. up on it, it's a huge learning curve. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 So fingers crossed. Yeah, crossed, that'd be that'd sure. be great. Yeah, that'd I'm be sure. awesome. I'm sure it would it would do well. I mean, people, it would do very well. You know, the, yes. the Metal Gear Solid series, I mm -hmm. think, you know, a lot of games in that PlayStation era, again, because of the improvements in the systems and the voice acting and the performances mm -hmm. kind of changed the entire face of mm -hmm. video games. You know what I mean? It was more fun. Mario bouncing around and now you have a story where you are the character and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. feeling what they're feeling because of the performances and everything. So, yeah, you know, I'd... and for me, it always starts with the word. Yep. Mm -hmm. Kojima san who is just, you know, yep. his mind just blew me away. Oh, it, crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. He, he is a definite G I mean, you know, cra crazy genius, if you want to call him that, but he's, you know, totally next level you know beyond what most mm -hmm. storytellers you know probably would even dare to go you know he he goes there and you know his and beyond style yeah way yeah. beyond yeah his, yeah his narrative style and you know that the whole kind of going meta but still keeping it an interesting mm -hmm. storyline is a yeah. very fine line you know where you could lose people but i think he does a, a good job with that mm -hmm. so yeah 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 um <clears throat> That was another thing we we're going to talk about is, you know, the whole you were on Ben 10 for quite a while. How how was that whole experience? Like you said, kind of later on, you got to do more stuff. But, you know, again, hugely talented cast, you know, up and comers, I'm sure, kind of around that that time frame. But how huh. how was that experience? Uh, it was wonderful. Um, th that's still one of one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, we did it on and off for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um I loved working with Andrea Romano, Chris Salter, and um, and RC yep. directed the last. <laughs> yeah, last yep, yep. It was weird to to have, have to re audition for my my role, <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> right? Which which is kind of strange. Yeah, I got it. You know, yep, that's good. That's you good. Know, um, what time had passed? Five years had passed, and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. So I, I, it was fine. I love doing the show. I love the character. I love everything about it. Um, and the cast. When they brought this, this guy named Eric Bowser, mm -hmm. in, who was this new kid in town <laughs> from Canada. Yep. I hate Canadians because they're so damn talented. I know. Hey, <laughs> I'm I'm part French Canadian, so I have half of the talent. So. <laughs> 
uh, yeah, it's like he and David K. I'm yep. sick of these people. I'm Tara. I, I yeah. Know. Oh yeah, Ta- yeah. We we saw Tara in your hometown too, and you know. Yeah. Like, yeah, she's no. Massive. Nobody should have that much talent, you know. No, it's not, it's not fair to the rest. <laughs> and of us. energy. Not, she has exactly. so much energy. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, what I'm really happy about is that she's happy. Yes. In her, in yep. her own life now as well. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yes, I, sure. I love her. Yeah. Um, but Eric, nobody really knew who Eric was. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he comes in because he had done some uh, animating or drawing mm-hmm. um, way back when. He comes in and he starts doing these characters and they said, well, can you do this guy? Can you do that? And anything. Yep. Here it is. And I told him then, I said, man, you're, you're going to blow up. You're just going to blow yeah. up. And now he's Bugs Bunny. He's everything. Yeah. He's, he's all those guys. Yeah. He's all. And he deserves it. Yep. He's just so, and he's a dad. He's got mm. this great, great kid. Uh, yeah. He's, um, yeah, he's something special. Yeah, and you, sure. you saw it immediately, right? In the studio, it's like yep. okay, nobody we, knows him right now, but they will. They right. will, and now they do for sure. Yep. For sure, there there are some people like that where you you know the Frank Welkers and and more you know my age bracket, uh, hanging out with R- Ross Marquand, some yeah. of the impressions and stuff. You know, some people can just abs not just the sound but the whole persona and Mm -hmm. you you know even joking around that they might do it as a party favor but it takes you there you know that that Mm -hmm. is when you know somebody's got it whatever it is when they when you instantly like wow yeah that was that was the for the five seconds you were jokingly doing it that was that character or person or whatever that's pretty awesome a friend of mine when, when i first moved out here uh we became close really quick because we were in a play group together. Mm-hmm. The name was Tony Pope. Okay. Mm-hmm. Tony Pope was, he was in everything that Disney did. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was at, uh, he played the, in the, uh, at, oh God, I'm trying to remember which one, the Alice in Wonderland. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the voice of, not um, of the king? Little, oh yeah, I, yeah, yep. And he's, he for a while uh, he was goofy for a while yeah yep. yes mm-hmm. um he passed away in, in his 50s mm. but he's one of those guys that like you're talking about you'd say hey uh, george burns george mm-hmm. burns mm-hmm. Hey, goofy goofy just anything mm-hmm. uh yep. it was a massive he got me into uh, uh doing uh, disney voices when i first came to town mm-hmm. And I'll never forget him for it. Um, but he's one of those guys that could do anything like Eric. Yep. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, he just um, passed away way too young. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Heartbreaking. But now his daughter, mm-hmm. his daughter is like that. Oh, cool. uh, she's on Instagram. She, I, it's got, I don't know, a million followers now or something like that. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Marcella Lentz Pope. Okay. Is her name Marcella. Um, and... And it's basically she just does all these different voices, and she'll take uh, English actors and do this is so and so doing this. Right, right. She's one of those. She's just got it. Yeah, that's you know? awesome. Yeah, yeah. that that's, that's awesome. really cool. And that and honestly, that's important. And you know, you know, growing up with animation and video games and stuff, I've always been into the artistic side because I draw. But like I said, I lo- I love to do voices and imitations and stuff too. And when you have a, like Eric, you know, obviously we can't get, you know, Mel's not, hasn't been around for years. You're not going to get exactly Mel and the older your voice, you know, your, your voice ages, all that stuff. But Eric getting so not only to the character itself, but just the voice character, you know, that is a big deal. You know, when you're used, when you grow up on a sound, like a Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime, you want something as close, you know, you, you can put your own personal spin on how the character interacts with people, but having the quality of the voice match as close as possible. A lot of times, you know, people can tell and, and you know, for me personally, like I said, because I love it so much, it, it makes a big difference. Whenever I'd watch episodes of, you know, because of budget, like if I'd watch a Ninja Turtle episode where Rob Paulson couldn't do Raphael, they'd have some other guy do it. 
And I'm like, I'm turning this off. I hate it. It's not yeah. Rob. I already tell it's not Rob. It's not Raphael. Not Rob. I hate it. I put the pizza away. I'm done. You know, the, the, <laughs> it, 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 you know, you get so used to the just the voice itself that, you yeah. know, you want to get at least close. You don't have to be perfect and you don't have to do exactly what that actor did. Mm -hmm. But when you're that good and you can make it sound like you'd swear it was the original, you know, actor, that's pretty special. You know, I think. To a a a amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you can do that. Yep. Hey. For sure. <laughs> Um, another funny one. This is, this, this is a compliment in a very strange way, but Candace and I are big gamers. You know, we're big nerds, obviously. We both love the Skyrim, you know, the Elder Scrolls games. We loved mm -hmm. Skyrim and the Stormcloak beautiful Army. Game. Beautiful, beautiful game. Amazing, yeah. amazing, crazy cast. You know, you got Christopher Plummer, you know, all those guys. I just, he yeah, was... I worked with Christopher Plummer. Hey man. Hey. <laughs> That's that's a big deal, and and he didn't he didn't even take your part. They didn't have to digitize him in, right? So right. You, you behaved yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know the the uh, uh, man, I already forgot the character his character's name because you know uh, my character. Or yeah, his? yeah, you, no, your character. Galmer uh, Stonefist. Yes, yes, yes Galmer. Yes. You know, I I we always sided with the Imperial. I was always an Imperial, even though you know I have. A little bit of Viking DNA. Just those guys were there was something so unlikable about those guys, which to me is actually awesome because I love the I love the entire cast, but cannot stand those characters. To me, that you know, making character likable is cool, but when you can really like someone and hate their character at the same time, I think that's even more impressive. You know, it's like I know I know it's Paul. I love Paul. But man, I can't, I cannot wait to destroy these guys castle. Like I hate them and we need to take them out. But you know, the nuances of, you know, how how much of that do you do you play into it or you try to play as the sympathetic side so people want to choose you or do you kind of have that edge where you think, you know, these guys are you get where they're coming from but they're not necessarily the greatest dudes, you know, how, does that yeah. play at all for you into I it? never I, I I never pass judgment on um it's just like acting um on stage mm -hmm. or in a film yeah uh, if i'm playing listen i wrote a piece that i did in a show about a guy who um murders his wife mm -hmm. um and and gets off on it mm -hmm. he hit her and for the first time he never hit a woman before never hit anybody before but mm -hmm. It felt good. Mm -hmm. So I hit her again. And he does. So he he's really a bad guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's paranoid. He, right. he, he he thinks something else. He thinks something went on that didn't. He was just mm -hmm. gone. Yeah. And I, I never thought of him as a bad guy. Right. He had a reason. Mm -hmm. Wrong. Right. Skewed. Right. right but bad guys don't go around and say, Hey, I'm going to be a bad guy. Right. Right. They exactly. Feel that they deserve right. what, you know, to be who they are. Mm -hmm. So with Galmar or, or any of any of the bad guys, even Mephisto, mm -hmm. you know, um, they don't think of themselves as right. Uh, being evil. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, it's for other people to decide, right? Yeah. Whether I'm bad or evil or whatever, right? Right. Not for me. Yeah. So I just I you know I try to put whatever humanity mm -hmm. uh, I can find right into those characters. Yeah. And that's you know great I mean? storytelling. Yeah. Yes. Because you know you we might judge them as bad, but they don't think that. So it's also very interesting to see from their perspective, like their justifications for their you know actions. So. I always enjoy that because I love a good bad guy. I want to love a good bad guy because it's you really see that other perspective as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, no, I've never watched it. I get, I've, I'm one of those, I'm going to watch it probably now, but Succession, mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. shows. Yep. Um, yeah. I, I, I never watched uh, Breaking Bad until it oh, was yeah. well off the air. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yep. Yeah. And, and and fell in love with the guys. That right. is a great right. story arc. Oh my goodness! Oh. Right, right. <laughs> Turned into horrible human beings. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 
but I couldn't but, get enough of them. Right. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you know, like we talked earlier, sometimes it's fun to have the good versus evil story, mm -hmm. but life is often way more complicated than that. And people, yeah. you know, yeah. we all do things, whether we, you know, we may even know they're not the greatest, but, you know, we may think the end result will make up for the couple mm -hmm. of bad things we had to do or you know like that's that's most of you know most historical rulers didn't go in thinking you know i'm a murderous tyrant i'm trying to help right. people and unify mm -hmm. people it just a lot of people are dying on the way to get there so yeah. You, oops yeah, yeah, yeah oopsie oops. yeah <laughs> bunch of dead bodies later but we're all one country and we're all happy right guys you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah which to me that's you know the the interesting stories and again i think it's fun to let especially for video games let the player decide what their personality type is and who they you know if they had to do bad both sides are doing bad things to each other what what end result are you shooting for versus what i might think is you know the and where's the line right yeah yeah, yeah. so that yeah, yeah. For or sometimes it's fun, it's fun to just hack your friends sometimes you know and you, Hey. It, you know? <laughs> hey, for the record, I my first playthrough of uh, Skyrim, I ended up uh, siding with the Nords. So, and then I saw that how that turned out, and I was like, oh, well, I guess my next one's going to be the Imperials because <laughs> yeah. I thought I was doing a good thing here. Right. Oops. <laughs> oops. Yeah, oops. Again, hey, yeah. But they did have they. You had a cool bear hat, so that at least was something. You know what I mean? Cool. Yeah, if you've got cool. if you've got the accessories that you know, he had I can a cool outfit. Yep. Yeah, sure. I love when people. Uh, they would contact me regularly and say, um, you know, you're the guy in the ice cave, right? Yeah, I yeah, you yeah, were. I, yeah. I killed you. I yeah, killed I was you. like, I'm sorry. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I felt so bad, too. I was like, I don't, I was like, is there another option? I was yeah. like, no. I don't want to do this. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I loved, yeah, I loved doing him. Yeah. And I love the, uh, the guys who do the, the prank calls. Mm-hmm with my characters <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> oh man that's awesome good stuff good stuff um you i know you've kind of the last few years you've been doing a couple like short films and things like that and i actually was able to check out frank and emmett and i thought it was awesome it's gotten really really rave reviews from everybody super high ratings um how did that project kind of come you know how, how do you get into like the short things and stuff like that nowadays like did you contact someone did they contact you or nope nope uh it, an audition came up through uh through my manager okay and um she sent it to me and said would you be interested in doing a short film and this is during uh during the pandemic mm -hmm. uh we were auditioned over uh, auditioning over zoom and i read the script and immediately it's like, yeah, I've got to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I've got it. I just, I know the soul of this character. I know who he is. I yeah. just, um, uh, and the idea of working with uh, um, a Muppet or a puppet right. mm -hmm. was like, I have a, a great imagination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a human being to me. It doesn't matter if it's, Inanimate, of you know, mm -hmm. I wanted the, the whoever was operating him to be good, right? Mm -hmm. And the guy was brilliant, yeah. Uh, but when I read the script immediately, I said, You know, you, you, you get auditions and you say, Boy, I really would like to do this, mm -hmm. and then you get auditions, and you say, I've got to have this one, this right. one yeah, yeah, right. I really, want this one. Yep. Yeah, you really. Yeah, I'll do broken. whatever it takes to get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're broken yeah. if you don't get it. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and this one I really wanted. Yeah. Um, and I felt good about my audition. I put it together here. Um, and uh, about a week later, I got a call that he wanted to um, do a callback with the director to give me some notes mm -hmm. and basically he he was, didn't really want to give me notes he just wanted to meet me and uh this is i found out afterwards he said it wasn't about uh, you know i just wanted to talk to you um and and that's when he went on <laughs> imdb and looked me up <laughs> uh and said, oh, my God, I didn't realize you were in this, you were in this, you were in this. 
and he's he's the head of animation at uh, DreamWorks. Oh wow! Okay. Um, and uh, a brilliant guy, Carlos, from mm -hmm, yeah. uh, originally from Spain, mm -hmm. and um, then we did a, a another callback uh, with um, Brian, who did the voice and operated um, Emmett. So we met on Zoom. And he told me after, the, I think, the third time that that I was his guy from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that he didn't realize who I, who I was voiceover-wise. He said, because he knew what, m a lot of the stuff I'd done, voiceover, the animation stuff. Yeah. He said, I could have cast you to do both his voice <laughs> and your voice. Right. And I said, yeah, but Brian is, mm. he's brilliant. Right. Um, so, um, from then on, we, we rehearsed on zoom many times, mm -hmm. changing the script, cutting it, cutting it, cutting it, cutting mm -hmm. it, cutting it. Uh, cause it was originally, it was about 18 minutes long okay. and he wanted to cut it down to really, you know, uh, it had to be a certain length to make it into the short film mm -hmm. right, right. category. And a lot of the stuff was just unnecessary. It was fun, right? Fun stuff, but unnecessary right. yeah. for the for the piece. There were some great jokes that we cut out that it was like, ah, oh. so... yeah, yeah. <laughs> Making there, there could always version. be yeah, there could always be an extras you know thing on YouTube or something. They can always <laughs> there you go. It, so. yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, and then we were supposed to shoot. I think it was in July, and then it got pushed because of COVID. Right. Mm -hmm to August, got pushed again for another month, got pushed again. We finally shot it in October of 20? Mm -hmm. October of 20. Mm -hmm. uh, and then made the circuit and made it into, uh, was Oscar qualified, but didn't make it all the way to the end, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I just uh, was talking with uh, Carlos uh, about finally releasing it mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it can be seen again right by yeah. folks yeah um yeah because that's how I, I saw it was that that limited you know there was a limited release thing that mm -hmm. he was right. pushing and i jumped right on that to check it out mm -hmm. i'm glad you did i'm yeah. really yeah. glad you did yeah i'm really proud of that piece mm -hmm. um and i'm proud of my uh my pandemic beard too. yeah i was gonna yeah. say that was that was yes <laughs> The facial hair was definitely that could have won its own award. Honestly, mm. they should have another category <laughs> just for beards. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, I think I told you I'd grown that for. Um, I was doing a shake. I was doing a measure for measure mm -hmm. at our theater, and then we were shut down. Yeah. Of mm -hmm. when COVID hit, but then I kept growing it, and then I had the audition. Right. And then it's like, and they wanted somebody with a big beard, yep. so I just let let that sucker grow. There you go. Man. You're like, there okay. You go. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, no, I really, I, I enjoyed it. Um, to me, sometimes it's cool. Those, the short, you know, everyone's attention spans getting shorter and shorter, you know, the mm -hmm. more the years go by, but you know, having that short story, it's kind of just a, it's literally a moment with a guy in a room, you know, at least mm -hmm. to me, you know, again, it's one of those things where it's, it's a little bit kind of a meta up for interpretation story. I feel like, you know, I don't know if there was a hundred percent, you know, finish line and, and story that was going for, but those kind of things where it's you can get a lot out of it, even in just that, you know, 10 minutes or whatever it ended mm -hmm. up being, yeah. you know, aging and, and, you know, giving up things, new generations coming on, doing things, stuff like that. To me, that's really cool to tell that much story in, you know, 10 plus minutes or whatever mm -hmm. it ended up being, yeah. you know, that, that it, to me it, is yeah, cool. 12 minutes yep. and it was dealing with his finally dealing with his, his existence and, right. uh, is yep. passing yeah so it's about all kinds of stuff right which right is, yep which yeah. again is cool to you know have that much gravity in you know that many <laughs> minutes is short story really cool yep. yeah yeah mm -hmm. he did i think he did a great job mm -hmm. and it was all shot i think in his bedroom yeah oh, yeah. yeah very cool yep. yeah loved it very it looks cool. beautiful yeah. yeah love it no we'll Try to get anybody, and it'd be cool if if they he released mm -hmm. it or had it available, you know, to download somewhere or something. That would be mm -hmm. cool to have everybody be able to check that out. Um, 
overall, you know, you talked about like Ben 10, the, the last uh, kind of season run there. What overall is your favorite acting experience? It could be the project itself or just the time period, the fun you had with the cast. What do you, what do you think is probably your most fun acting experience overall that you enjoyed? You mean in Ben 10? In anything. In anything. In anything. anything. Yeah, in anything. Yeah. They're, All the projects. Go, go the whole, span the theater. whole career. Yep. Yeah. Theater, anything. Oh, well, that, it, it's, it's, it's easy. Um, it was the most, it was the most difficult thing. Oh, God, now it's tough. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You think you know until you really think about exactly. it. Exactly. Right? Like, yeah, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, <laughs> although, yeah. We got free I, pizza that one, that one gig. You know? <laughs> I absolutely loved um, my two years doing improv and creating our own material. Mm. We would, yeah. we would, uh, we would, we would do an hour and a half show that we wrote um, that usually came from uh, improv yeah. and developed into a regular show. And then at mm. the end of the show, we do 30 minutes of spontaneous improv no taking ideas and going downstairs and talking about them right. we're just up there right. and your face is hanging out if yep. you screw up you screw up <laughs> that's that awesome was, though that was a really exciting time and formative for me because it was when i decided that this was my mm -hmm. career yep i made that choice and making a hundred dollars a week cleaning the bathrooms taking tickets <laughs> um cleaning the theater, all that stuff. And it didn't matter because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still good friends with the guys that um, that I started with. Mm -hmm. oh. But single was also the most difficult thing I've ever done. For 10 months, I did Fiddler on the Roof. Mm -hmm. I played Tevya yep. uh, for 10 months. Wow. Eight, eight, eight shows a week. Um, That's a lot. It was uh, in a... a Full equity production in Minneapolis mm -hmm. at a 660 seat theater and never got bored once doing the show. That's awesome. Was That's... always excited about doing it. <laughs> Wonderful casts mm -hmm. um, over the 10 minutes. Some, some people came and some people had to leave to do other things. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the energy, um, <clears throat> that it took mm -hmm. and uh the care that you that Tevye has for the mm -hmm. for the village which mm -hmm. is i also looked at the cast was the village yes. and the friendships that we developed from that mm -hmm. um were uh, just really special to me um and also because I was the lead. Right. Hey, exactly. Doesn't hurt. Exactly. It doesn't, doesn't hurt, hurt, baby. No. I get I get that final bow all to myself. Right. You know? mm -hmm. right. Yeah. All the applause <laughs> is for me, just so you guys yes. are aware. Yeah, you gotta let everybody know where they stand, right? <laughs> no, That's amazing just, though. It was uh it was so much fun. Um and the, the great thing was you know, I I talk to young actors now, and they say, Oh my god, I did this long run. We did three weeks, <laughs> four shows a week. And by the end, it's like, oh, my God, mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't know how to do it. I was I was getting bored. And it's like, how dare you? <laughs> right, mm -hmm. right. Usually by the th third or fourth week, maybe a month. Oh, oh, now I'm, I'm, I'm right, finding, you're finding your way. Now you, yeah, can, have yeah, you, get, you, now right. you can have fun with it. You can get right. loose with it. Yeah. yeah, maybe I'm a slow learner. Yeah, um, it could, <laughs> hey. <laughs> and each uh, night is different mm -hmm. the lines are the same mm -hmm. yeah but the air in the space is different yeah uh the audience is different there's a different sense of what's going on mm -hmm. right um so every night was was exciting um so i, I so that's it it yeah. wasn't unfortunately it wasn't about uh on camera or voiceover mm -hmm. right but the, i think because i I started as a as a, a stage actor. Mm -hmm. Very cool. My voice is killing me right now. Not hurting. It just right. makes me makes me angry. And it's because of all the 
I, I was gonna say, right, I was construction. Gonna, yeah. I know all about that. We we oh. I completely remodeled and gutted the upstairs and half the downstairs of our old house. Yeah. Where oh we lived. It was built in 1880. So I have no idea what kind of things are growing inside me to this day. Like it's yeah. you know, asbestos mixed with, you know, we didn't you have know, that for no other, you know, brick brick mortar in the in the sea. I I know all about it, man. You breathe some of that stuff and it's like, well, I'm going to die within the week. (laughs) Hi, everybody. It's been fun. (laughs) Nice talking to you. Yeah, 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 exactly. Glad I could help with your project. I'm dead now. Thank you. (laughs) But there is something really special about theater, though, because like you said, it's different every single night. It's that live performance and there's that different energy depending on, you know, your other actors that you're dealing with and the audience. So I I completely understand that. And that's awesome that that's like some of your favorite, especially since that's when you decided you were really, that's what you wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. And that performance only happens once. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And it's exactly. Gone. Right. Exactly. exactly. You can't play it back. Yep. There were, especially back yeah. in the day, there was no, you know, cell phones mm-hmm. to videotape the whole thing. We talked about that with, uh, Dan had talked about that with one of his panels and, you know, doing theater work and stuff and that Mm -hmm. going when you get in that zone where you forgot that you were even on stage when you're done, you know, you really just dive into the character that for a lot of, you know, quite a few actors that especially start in stage, I think for them, that's, you know, you're not worried about the cameras, you're not worried about cut, you know, there's no cutting, there's no takes, there's no try it again. It's I'm going, I'm getting on stage, I'm this character and we're going to let it fly and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And that has to be exciting. Listen, I'm I'm still in acting class. I take an acting class every Saturday. Yeah. Uh, but I've been in, I think I, I may have mentioned it to you guys, mm-hmm. that Helen Hunt yes. is teaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah you did. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I do it because I, wanna, I remind myself mm-hmm. why I'm an actor. Right. It's yeah. not about money. It's not about anybody who gets into acting to, to <laughs> right. be rich or famous yes. is an idiot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause that's not going to last. No, right. you gotta, no. you gotta do it. Cause, cause you have to, cause you it's love storytelling. it. Storytelling. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a process. Yeah. yeah. A lot of things are like that. If you want to be successful, you have to love it, mm-hmm. you know, eating ramen every night, you know, for the rest of your life, and you're still, <laughs> you do you it for to? free, you know, you'd pay them to do it. You know, you gotta yeah. love it that much to really, you know, it's, I, I feel like a lot of things in life are a time game more than a, you know what you have to put a lot into it over time for it to really take off you never know mm-hmm. some people get lucky and you know yeah. shot in the pan thing but most of the time whenever we finally get what we want it's because we put in the hours to mm-hmm. get there so yeah yeah for yeah. Sure. yeah well all of that was great but we're we're gonna now we're gonna hit the really hard topic questions so, so oh. you know I'm gonna take a deep breath. They're not bad. Yeah, they think, you know. This, I this promise. Is, this is this is what separates the men from the boys here. This is where this is where we really find out who who you are. So we have a we we like to do the kind of actor studio quick questions, you know, the to kind of psych profile. And first one is favorite food. Favorite food. I, this um, is the deep stuff. I told you. Yeah. These are the tough yeah. ones. Well, you've seen me, uh, just about anything. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, um, Thai. Ooh, oh, yeah. that's a good one. That's a good one. I love. Uh, and, um, yeah, Thai Thai food. I I love um, tom kha soup, mm-hmm. tom kha mm-hmm. and I love I love pineapple fried rice. <laughs> Yeah, it give me a hard time. You know, I I don't know that I've ever tried that. That doesn't. The older I get, I used to as a kid, I hated sweet and savory like that. But the older I get, I really like I anything with yeah. fruit and super savory. Mm-hmm. I really tom kha really uh, soup. It's a coconut based mm-hmm. soup. Yeah, with you know, and I get a little spicy. Mm-hmm. Not terribly spicy. Yeah, but a little spicy, yep. and uh, I can live on it. Nice. It's awesome. Nice. Very nice. Now, this one's my favorite because I'm a musician, too. And we had Dave Fenoy on for a while, and he's a huge jazz guy. And we I'm pretty sure we, you know, I, I bored my co-host on that one because we went super deep into jazz fusion and all that. But um, what is your favorite music group? It could be a single person, a band, who, favorite musician or music group. No, oh, I'm old school. Um, it's, there are two. Uh, Stevie or uh, Earth, Wind & Fire. Ooh. Yes. 
Yeah. I mean, there's so many. It's, yeah. it's I know. Really I, hard. There's a, there I know. There's, a, there's a big list, but there, mm -hmm. yeah. Bruce, yeah. I, I, my, my daughter took me to see Bruce um, several years, several years ago. And the dude went on for three and a half hours. Wow. And I never got, we never got tired of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, it's, it, that's a hard one. I know. It's a, it it is, is. Especially if you are a musician, you're, mm -hmm. the whole world yeah. opens up and it's just like, there's so many reasons to like, it, you know, when you kind of know the background of music, there's so many reasons to like a band or a, you know, a singer that maybe people don't understand what's going on behind the scenes, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I go to, when I go to, to uh, Motown stuff mm -hmm. or Earth, Wind & Fire, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. yep. because that takes me back to my youth. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, my background is uh, I'm from Cleveland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm from the east side mm -hmm. of yeah. Cleveland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which was at the time, uh, it was, it, I mean, they literally wrote about us. Mm -hmm. Right. It was the, called the ghetto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the ghetto stretched from um, 55th to 105th. Mm -hmm. And from uh, Euclid to Superior, mm -hmm. and our house was almost almost <laughs> smack dab in the middle, probably right. Yeah. We were on 82nd and Wade Park, mm. yeah. Yeah. and that was my youth. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, uh, I loved it. I was a musician, I was, I was playing with some uh, this is in high school and mm -hmm. in early college, some good musicians, yeah. Um, so that was R and B was was uh, my background, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. We love Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah, we, so yep. We uh, you know, I we told you we're we're living in Ann Arbor, Michigan now, but we you know we both are from mm -hmm. Michigan, and uh, you know the Motown scene and just the music scene. Period. Anywhere in Michigan, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many musicians that came out here, and we actually were fortunate enough to see Earth, Wind, and Fire in Detroit right before oh, the pandemic. Wow. Yeah, at and Shane they, Park. Philip Bailey was doing things. Still? I don't think he did in his twenties. Like the, mm -hmm. the falsetto high notes, I he they blew the I mean the dancing, the 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 stage. Everybody show. in the crowd was dancing. Yeah. It was the best concert I've ever been to. It and was... I love Lady Gaga. I've seen her live, but Earth Wind and Fire was the best concert yeah. I've ever been to. And Sheila E opened for them. So yeah. it was just oh powerhouse. Yeah. Yeah, they just they they <laughs> it was rocking. It, it was jamming. They, they tore it up. So did I tell you my story about Prince? No. Him, maybe, okay. I, yeah. Yeah, if I did, stop me. No, no, we'll we'll do it for the, everybody watching. We can yeah. we can recap it. Okay, yeah. so I was living in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. and I was working. I did a lot of voiceover stuff at a little place called Moon Sound. Mm -hmm. Chris Moon had this little converted garage, and into a studio, and uh, I went to do my stuff. And I was getting ready to leave, and as I was leaving, Chris came up to me and said, oh, "You got to come check this out. Check this out." There's a guy in here who does it all, and he's he's just a kid, mm -hmm. and and he's 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 going to be something special. And I went in, and he didn't see me. I was in the um, in the booth, and it was it was pretty dark, so you really couldn't get a good view. But he was I figured which, I figured I think he was laying down a, a rhythm a guitar mm -hmm. track. He had already done the drums. He had also done. Um, vocals and whatnot and i had no i, I didn't I, I don't think he even called him prince at that point mm -hmm. um but he said this guy is it he's the one he's 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 got the he's the whole package so i said wow he said, that blew me away and i left and then found out <laughs> it was prince yeah That'd be um, amazing. I, I don't even remember what year it was because i was there in minneapolis from from 70, moved there from in 73, mm -hmm. 73 to 83. Mm -hmm. So it was in the 70s somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He might have still been with a group. I think he was playing with a group still like early to mid 70s, I think. So. But he was, he was in yeah. there all alone. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Recording his yep. stuff. And yep. that's, and Chris is, uh, is the one who got him known, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's such a cool experience. It blew me away. Yeah, blew me away. It's yeah. like, oh, a legend in the making. Yeah, I knew, I knew Prince <laughs> before it was cool. <laughs> yeah. A legend in the making. That's You're amazing. Right. I, again, well, I called it. I, you know, I called Transformers and I called Prince. So <laughs> two for two now. 
<laughs> I got to do it. One of my uh, favorite uh, live concerts was um, in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Still, when I got out of the war, out of out of the military, and it was to see um, Sly and the Family Stone. Oh yeah, yeah. But it was Sly and the Family Stone. Um, oh God, they did they did a vocal version of uh, Grazing in the Grass. I forgot the name of the group. There were four groups. Um, three three black groups, including you know uh, mm-hmm. Fly, and the Box Tops. Okay, I remember them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wrote you a letter. Mm-hmm. Well, I wrote you a letter. Well, they were not a fan favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh, because folks were there to see um, you know, Sly and the Family Stone right. and R&B. And mm-hmm. that, whoever booked them in this heavy R&B. Yeah. The, did yeah. not do anybody yeah, any Standard favors. rockers. Yeah, the, the early rockers. Yeah. And I felt bad for them, but they got kind of nasty with the audience because the audience yeah. didn't really want to hear. Right. Yeah. Um, and we had front row seats. But the front row was about 10 feet from the stage, mm-hmm. oh, wow. maybe 12 feet from the stage. Mm-hmm. And when they finally showed up, uh, which was about maybe almost an hour late, mm-hmm. um, when Sly family started playing, we had to run. It was the public auditorium in Cleveland. It was, I forget how many, a couple thousand seats. Mm-hmm. We had to run from our front row seat to get to the stage before we were buried with this crush of people. Yeah. Trying to get to Sly. Yeah, probably. Wow. And again, it, it was a great, con- they they really kicked once they got there and started playing. <laughs> right. oh, yeah. Live that's, concerts. That's Sweet. great. Very Sweet. cool. Well, that's good Good picks there. All right. Um. So this one is dependent on if you are, a, are or ever were a cereal eater. What do you think the best cereal of all time is? Oh, Raisin Bran. I, <laughs> no. I agree. I Listen, agree. No, I'm not. That's a high up girl. there. That's high up there on my yeah. list too. That's that's yeah. that's a good one. I love Raisin Bran. Yeah. Right now we have Raisin Bran or uh, uh, shredded wheat. Okay. I love Frosted, frosted Shredded Wheat. Yeah. Yep. yeah. No, those yep. are my two. Yep. yep. There you go. Hundred percent. Well, good company. <laughs> Now, this is the most divisive one, and I have lost a lot of heroes over this one. You know, I oh. the, a lot of people went <laughs> no way pressure, down to my butt, Paul. but no pressure. No pressure. Answer, no pressure. Answer truthfully, and you'll see by my reaction if it's the right <laughs> or wrong answer. But uh, no. So this is for any any lounging room, comfortable room, not counting kitchens or bathrooms or places where there's food or, or liquids. What is your preferred flooring type? Carpet or hardwood in a house, in a room? Um, <laughs> before children, um, before a daughter that had asthma, mm-hmm. um, oh, God. <laughs> Taking all the other equations out. No, Don't worry about pets or anything like that. If you, if you oh. were starting over in your own house, your your like living room, lounging areas. What's your preferred floor type? Well, if there was a throw rug here and there, it would be hardwood. Okay. Oh, sorry. All right. <laughs> no. Well, I lost I'm another hard... one. I lost another one today, I'm but it's okay, girl. man. It's okay. I like hardwood, but yeah. He's... Listen, our, our the home we bought in uh, our first home together in mm-hmm. Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. Uh, we bought this home. Um, it's a great place, two story. Well, they're not three, three, three stories plus a basement. We bought it from a, a, a lady who'd been there for sixty five years. She painted the entire house, um, like in, except for well, there was one room that was painted pink, it was a sunroom, pink, and they painted a maple floor gray. Oh no! And oh was, no! And there was green carpeting. Everywhere else, mm. there was a linoleum in the kitchen, and all of the walls were painted this institutional gray, including yeah. this. They had a beautiful uh, banister going up the stairs mm-hmm. that had all been painted. Yeah. Oh, so no. my wife and I 
bought it, and we stripped every piece of wood mm -hmm. ourselves. Yep. All the windows, all the scroll work on that banister going up the stairs, yep. all the stairs. We redid all the floors, and they were uh, like a, a blonde maple. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's pretty. It was almost swore. It was gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. was gorgeous. Oh, I'm sure. Um, but a lot of work. But hey, I mean, you restored it back to its original beauty. And the, the cool thing is, we did all that, just the two of us. And we stayed married. Right. Uh, yeah. That's the yeah. big one right there. <laughs> that's yeah. the big one. When you do a that's like, like I said, we, we, we're, <laughs> we're going on 16 years in May and we completely redid one yeah. full and a half of a house. Basically and nine years here, of that marriage she, she with goes, some type of major she, res renovation. Yeah. She either goes and hides somewhere when I'm doing projects or just goes out and <laughs> yeah. goes to see a movie or something. And I just, was like, you know, I trust you, yeah. but call I'll me, come call back me when you're done because I can't do like, handle the, the painting and the minimal yeah. work because yeah. I can't do the big major construction. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you can go through a uh, home restoration or yeah. uh, any kind of remodeling and stay together. Yep. yep. That, you're, you're in it to win it yeah for right sure. exactly yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. all right well on that note we'll let you go we won't take up any more of oh, time, no. but, yeah, yeah he's so he's so angry now yeah, <laughs> yeah i actually i actually had a whole nother page of questions but i'm we're, we're done i'm that's over. always no. the last one it's funny because that's always the last question we ask it is <laughs> and it's 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 become basically a, a worse you know, division than the Civil War was. It's you know, it's <laughs> team, team Carp and Team Hardwood. Man, it, it's it's brutal. It gets brutal. So no. okay, yeah. who's who's Team Carp uh, from the Transformers? Um, so far from the Transformers, I'm not sure, but we've had we've had a couple other people we've talked to that. Again, it seems like pets and kids are the big one that pushed yeah. them over to the hardwood yeah. thing. It's just easier yeah. to clean, and I I get that. I mean, we have one cat, but I still. I prefer carpet and if I'm going to chill out and and again, you know, I do AV for a living. So mm -hmm. the more you can deaden a sound in a room, like my theater area in my basement, mm -hmm. it's, I fully carpeted just that section just for that mm -hmm. reason. And you yeah. know, everybody's, every, everybody's different. And yeah, we, we did that with, we had a home, another home in, in, uh, St. Paul. Mm -hmm. And the reason we bought the place, uh, uh, it's, it's since we've been out here, mm -hmm. the reason we bought the place is that, uh, the basement, completely uh, finished mm -hmm. and carpeted because right. yeah. that's where I was going to do my recording exactly yep. um, when I, when we were back there yeah I prefer carpeting in the bedroom yes mm -hmm. that's yes. it there you go so when you, so when you get out of bed yes, yes. You're, you're not touching cold floor. You're, you're okay then we're then cold we're cold good floor. then we're we're, friend, we're friends again we're friends again it's we're a comfy good. room yeah so. it is it is yeah <laughs> yep. that, that saved it for me so we're, we're <laughs> No. But a wishy washy Paul. Uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. I like yeah. 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 I, I, I do like them both. I think the I think the hardwood was Otis talking to be honest with you. But you know <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Good stuff. Oh, um crazy. yeah, so do you have any projects or anything you're kinda working on or you're just kinda doing doing your thing right that you wanna tell everybody about or are you just kinda oh, doing boy. your thing right now? Anything just doing it. Um I'm working next week and well I'm working the rest of the month. Uh, but this is just more Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a a series called um, the wait a minute Beauty Queen of Jerusalem. Okay, mm -hmm. it's the second season. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually it's really good. Uh, I voiced a couple of characters through the first season mm -hmm. uh, last year, and they're finally finishing. Uh, they're sending the episodes of uh, season two but it's just replacing a voice of a couple of characters mm -hmm. okay uh, but it's really well done it, it's it's what happens it's what's happening in in uh israel mm -hmm. in well in palestine in that area mm -hmm. from the 20s to uh the to the war to, to okay. the 40s wow. Wow. So it sounds really interesting through. It's it really is fascinating, and the, the acting is mm -hmm. really good. Um, yeah. And one of the characters that I, I, I revoice is a really uh, some really serious stuff happens to him mm -hmm. and his family yeah. with the uh, Holocaust and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's 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 
it's interesting to, to revoice an actor mm-hmm. when you're not doing the actual right work yeah. of it, but trying to mm-hmm. uh, kind of match up ADR style. Yeah, but yeah. the whole performance. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the performance more yeah. so than mm-hmm. the, the, right the voiceover stuff because it's that, that's what it's all about the performance. Mm-hmm. Right. So exactly. I want to do justice to this gentleman. Right. Um, with with the English language. Right. Wow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. That's yeah. Very cool. Stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. That's and right. I'm going to uh, Fort Myers. Uh, for a con in on May fifth. I'll be down there. Oh yeah. Fifth, sixth, and seventh. Mm-hmm. For uh, what's it called? The Hero Con. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Hero Con. Yeah. Everybody yeah. go see Paul. Yep. Yeah, come there say hi. Go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> it's great to see you guys. Love it. Yeah, yeah it's you good too. to see you too. Yep. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, this thank is you so wonderful. Much. We'll, we'll definitely yeah. still we'll keep in touch, and I'm sure mm-hmm. hopefully it will be last time we hang out at a an event or something. So yeah, I'd yeah. like that. We'll make it happen really. again. But yeah, sure. so we'll uh, kind of let it go there. We thank thank you, Paul, for being on. I'm Aaron and Candice, and we will talk to everyone later. <laughs> <laughs>